Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to learn how to write Ghidra scripts to automate and speed up your reverse engineering. Now you can write Ghidra scripts in either Java or Python, and this will allow you to do a lot of different things, such as iterating through the functions, uh, automatically setting comments based off of certain scenarios, or maybe even fixing data types, but this will allow you to do anything you need to standardize and speed up your reverse engineering process. So let's get right into it and see how we can get started. First of all, I'm going to open up my Ghidra instance, and you can feel free to pick any file of choice that you would like to analyze, since we're just going to be doing a couple different basic things today. So I'm going to double click this application and let's get started. Now first thing you can do is you can either open it through the window tab or there is optionally a shortcut to get to the scripting manager. So you can go through window and then you hit script manager or alternatively, you can hit this little play button right here. And all this is gonna do is just display the script manager. So let's just click on that. And then it's gonna bring up this page. Now what this page has is a ton of different default scripts that might do exactly what you're trying to do already. So make sure before you write your own completely new script, you've explored the different ones already available so you're not reinventing the wheel. This also has some good scripts if you're just trying to get an idea of where to start and how to actually use the Ghidra API. So I'm actually going to write a new script from scratch before we go ahead and explore any of these. So if we want to get started with that, all we need to do is go to the right hand side and click on this little icon that says create new script. And let's create a new one. Now, a lot of Ghidra is actually implemented in Java, but it gives us the option of either using Java or Python for our Ghidra scripting. Now I'm going to use Python today. And what this is actually doing is it's actually going to be running Jython so that it can communicate with all of those different Ghidra Java classes and objects on the back end. So we can do our front end scripting inside of Python. I'm going to click OK. And then let's give our file a na new name. So I'm just going to call this uh, print something dot pi. Super creative today. And this is going to create our new file. Now this looks really teeny tiny and a lot of the Ghidra code defaults to really small text that's very difficult to see. So if you want to increase the font size here and make it bigger, all you need to do is click on this button and then you can click the font size and style of your choice. I'm just going to select 20, maybe that will be a lot easier to see. Oh yeah, I think that's a lot better. And now if we look at the top hand portion here, this is going to give you a lot of different categories that are going to be displayed. If you see we have a description, name, key, category, all of these different things that we can optionally add to our script before we actually get to adding the user code portion. Now I'm going to take this little outline here because the default code editor actually doesn't have syntax highlighting and I'm going to throw this into Notepad++ while we do our editing. So I'm going to pull up Notepad++ and we'll paste in our little shell program here. And I'm going to set the language to be Python. And this way we actually get some highlighting while we're trying to write our different function calls. So first of all, if we want to begin actually editing our program, we need to consider this very first vari variable that you're just going to want to memorize. And this is going to be called current program. Now, if we go to the documentation for the Ghidra API online, I highly encourage just exploring through here and seeing if you can find different methods of interest that you might not realize that you're able to do. But this is going to be the documentation for the program object. Now, this class is kind of the root class for a lot of different methods that you're able to call, and you can go through and explore all of these different methods that are available for you once you call this program class right here. So what's happening is if you are calling this current program variable, this is actually getting the instance of the program class. So then you can use this to invoke any of the different methods or fields or anything defined inside of here. So let's go on and see what we can do once we have this actual current program object. 
I'm going to go through and I think we'll just first print out all of the different function names inside of our program. So let's go through our documentation and see how we can get started with that. I'm going to look for get function and it looks like we have this get function manager method defined right here and this is going to return to us a function manager object. So I'm going to open this up and let's see what this is actually providing. So this is going to return us back a function manager object and once we have that object we're able to perform all of these different method calls right here. So this is actually going to make it available to us to get the different functions, get function at a certain entry point or address, and so many more things that you might want to do. So let's just take that first function call to get function manager. So let's do current program dot get function manager. So now it has that function manager object inside of here. So once we have that, let's see what we can do. I'm going to go through and let's look at the get function options. And I think what I want to do is I just want to get a whole list of all of the functions that are inside of the program. But you have all of these different options here. If you would like to get the number of functions inside of the program, just get the external functions or anything like that. So I'm just going to do get functions and we have this boolean parameter inside of it. Now what this is doing is it's just saying do we want to print the functions from lowest address to highest address or if you put false it will actually just go through and print the functions backwards. So I don't really care so I'm just going to put true. So now we have our function manager object. Let's call get functions on that. We'll do dot get functions and then I'm going to return true. So now we have that call, and so this should return us a list of all of the functions inside of the program. So we can double check. We see we're getting a function iterator object that's going to be returned. Let's take a look at that. It's going to be returning this function type that we can iterate through. And once we have that, it looks like we have the actual function object that's going to be stored inside of our variable. So I can scroll down and see all of the different manipulations that we can do for this particular function. So remember, this is getting all of the functions inside of the program, and then we're going to store that inside of a variable. But each one of those functions that we've stored a reference to has all of these different things that we can actually call on them if we want to get a comment inside of that function, get all of the variables inside of that function, or maybe set a parameter or add a parameter. Now in order to manipulate each one of these individually, let's go back to our code and let's store all of these functions inside of a variable. So I'm just going to call this app functions and we'll store that reference for all of the functions inside of the program into this app functions variable. And let's go down and let's just iterate through every single one of the functions inside of this variable. So I'm going to use an enhanced for loop and we'll do for func in app functions. And all I want to do is I think I'm just going to print out the name of the function to demonstrate iterating, iterating through all of them. So we'll just do print func dot and then what we're going to put inside of here is a call to getting the actual function name. So let's go back to our documentation to see what is the actual method name that will get a, give us our desired function name. So let's go through and we're looking for something like get name or something like that. It looks like we do have that indeed right here and it is returning a string that is going to be the actual function name. So we'll just call that. So we'll do dot get name. And that should print out the string name of the particular function. And since we're putting this inside of a for loop, it should print all of the functions in the program. So let's take a moment here and let's just run that and see what that looks like. I'm going to copy my code. Maybe let's get rid of our to do. And let's just paste that inside of our Ghidra instance. Now we have our code and optionally, we can add the author or category. So I'm just going to do, let's do author, Lori Wired, 
maybe category is printing something. And let's just get rid of the rest of this. This is just temporary data. You can feel free to change this to anything you want. And let's save this. And I'll up also update my Notepad++ instance. Okay, so now when we're ready to run, we can actually hit this little play button right here. And this is going to run our actual script on the current program. I'm gonna make this smaller so that we can see it running on the program. So let's pull up our code browser. And if you look on the bottom, we have this console scripting. So this is gonna be the actual console output while we're running our script. So since we're printing the function names to the console, I expect all of these to appear in this console as long as I didn't make some syntax error. So let's just hit that play button we mentioned. And it'll say running and it'll show this. And here we go. So if we take a look at this, we can go through and see it did indeed print all of the different functions defined inside of here. So this is going to be user code, library code, any of anything that is a function inside of this program is getting printed to the console. Now, if you want to check if any of the functions exist, you can simply copy the name and then paste it in the filter bar inside of your symbol tree. And you should see the actual function name defined inside of there for every single function. Now let's move on and see if we want to set a comment for a particular function, how we would go ahead and add to our script to do that. So I'm going to pull up my Notepad++ again, and let's just pick on the current selected function, this FUN47256, and let's add an if statement inside of our for loop right here. Now what I want to do is I just want to add one comment inside of only this function, but not inside of any other function, but I still want to go through and print out all the function names. So I'm going to do an if statement, if, and we'll do func.getName. Remember this is just checking the current function that we're working with since we're still inside of our for loop. And then we'll check if it equals the one function that we ended up picking on. And then once we do that, we can do func dot and we'll do set comment. Now, if we go back to our documentation, we can double check that we're using the correct method name for setting a comment. So I'm going to search set comment and it looks like nice simple call. All we need to do is pass in the string, which is going to be the comment for this particular function. So let's do set comment. And then we'll actually make our comment. Let's do we are inside, then our function name. All right, looks good. So all we're gonna do is gonna go through and iterate through every single function in this program. We're going to print their name to the console. And then if this function name equals the one we picked on inside of our application, we're going to set a new comment for being inside of that function and that should appear in the decompilation window and the disassembly window if we're taking a look at it. Let me copy this code and we'll update our Ghidra script. So let's just paste that in here. I'll hit save. And I'm gonna clear out our console output by doing this little clear console button on the far right hand side. And then let's hit our play button and see what happens. So it's running. It printed out all of our particular method names inside of this application. So let's go through, right now we're in our entry point. Let me make that a little bit bigger so you can take a look. Ooh, a little too big. And let's go to the function that we actually picked on and see if our comment was actually set. And it looks like it did, in see, it did indeed set that comment. We are inside of FUN 47256. Now the last thing I want to do is just explore a couple of the different script options that are already by default inside of Ghidra. So let's just go to our script manager. And I'm going to put this new script to the side and let's kind of explore and see what we've got. Best thing to start with is just to go to examples. And you can see we have some for demangling stuff. We have this Python examples. Let me see what's in here. 
Let's try Ghidra Basics. This is probably going to be a really good starting point if you're trying to wonder where to begin in writing your actual scripting code. And all we need to do is we need to do right click, and then we can do edit with basic editor. And that's just going to throw the actual code for this script into the basic editor on the right hand side so that we can begin our exploration of it. So I can just scroll down here and this will give me a lot of ideas for manipulating the current program, setting comments, or doing anything like that. And I can explore through a little bit more in here. Let's see something interesting, maybe data types. So if we look at our options, fix array struct references script, that looks promising. So we'll do edit with basic editor. And we can see how they're going through and actually fixing these different data types. So this is a really common kind of application of this. Let's say something is typed incorrectly, you can go through and actually fix that code. And there are so many different default scripts inside of Ghidra already to help you do that. And if you would like to simply test out your script as you're going, there is a built-in Python interpreter. All you need to do is go to Window, and then we'll do Python. This is going to bring up a Python interpreter for you in another window, and you can just use Python like you regularly would. Let's say print, hello world, and that will print it to the console as well. So if you're trying to test and see if one line actually works, then you don't have to run your entire script to run just that little bit of code. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, we learned how to start Ghidra scripting to automate some of your reverse engineering tasks. We went through and we showed how we could print all of the different function names inside of a program. We also automatically set a comment if we found a particular function. So this is really useful if you're trying to fix data types or automatically update method names or variables or anything like that, and it will speed up your reverse engineering process by a lot. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. I think it's impossible to do this without feeling the beat.